Hello viewers, my name is Chase Clover and this is my third video uploaded today and my third out of, I believe, four videos that I will be putting up today. Um, maybe five, I don't know. Um, but this uh, is a top ten video. It is my very first top ten video in this series. Um, and this is my top ten performers in USW right now. Um, this is not based on any stats or any stati this is not based on anything statistic wise this is not based on any anything um factual wise this is more of an opinion video this um this video is pretty much based completely on my own opinion not on facts not on statistics this is just who I think are the top 10 performers in USW right now. And I'm going to start it off, I'm going to get it off with number 10, Chris Ross. Tall man, Chris Ross. He, right now, is the only person in USW with a nickname inserted into his ring name. Right now, he also holds the record for longest reign as USW World Heavyweight Champion at 84 days. He is a former four-time World Heavyweight Champion which is a record, and that pretty much gives, ha, makes, that pretty much gives me the ability to respect him as a performer. I've met him, he's a great guy, he's tall, he's strong, he's very, um, he's very quick-witted, he's very aware of his surroundings and you know and the performers and he's very aware of what he has to do to win and come out victorious he's a great performer I'm glad that USW is trying right now to give him the spot that I think they shoot that I think USW truly knows that he deserves which is at least one you know at least a feud of some sort um to bring him on pay-per-views or whatever because they weren't using him nearly as much as they should have been in the past few months, so I'm glad that they're reincorporating him into USW um, events. So, I'm glad about that. Uh, I'm looking forward to his match um, tomorrow night against James, and that should be good. And, uh, yeah, going to keep out, keep a look out, keep an eye out for Tom and Chris Ross. Number nine, Alex. If he and George Martin are not split up as a tag team, he would not be, in my opinion, one of the best performers in USW, and that USW has going for him right now. He is a former, I believe, five or six time unified USW World Heavyweight or unified USW Tag Team Champion. He he's very athletic. He's very unique. He's very gifted. He has a lot of speed to his name. Or, I'm sorry. He has a lot of speed to his wrestling maneuvers or to his wrestling moves that. He incorporates a lot of high flying maneuvers into his into his everyday wrestling um, move set, and he's got this presence in the ring that makes you feel like you're about to be, um, I guess, impressed. He's, you're about to be blown away by something, at least one thing in the match. He's very tough. He can come back from a lot of things. I mean, if you had seen his match with George Martin. I think it was Outcast or Ultimate Consequence when he jumped over the top rope and landed on his shoulder after he completely missed George Martin and the ring and the ropes. The only thing he impacted was his shoulder into the outside ring mat. He was able to get up and he ended up performing at the intensity after that and then the week after that and then the week after that and participate in the pay-per-view. He's one tough motherfucker and um, he's one of those performers where he hasn't really gotten his main push yet, and that, and he hasn't really gotten to that point where you're gonna remember his name for a lo a long time. He hasn't really gotten to that point yet, but I'm pretty sure if he continues his dominance and his um, and if he continues his ring um ability and keeping it the way it is and keeping you know and keeping the hard work going, I'm pretty sure then. Soon enough, he'll get a chance at the the world championship or the USW championship. That's that's pretty much clear to me. I can tell he's gonna get at least another world championship, um, you know, attempt or challenge 
and either that or a USW World or a USW Championship, you know, challenge or contest or whatever. Um, so again, keep out an eye out for Alex, uh, not Alex Martin, Alex. So with that, we go on to number eight, Dustin Raymond. I believe a former four-time blue belt champion had a great, uh, many great um, matches against Dwayne Porter for the blue belt championship um, in recent past. He is much more of a sleeper performer than he is of a performer that is known and that is um, expected to have um, a great match and um, a great fight. He's more of a sleeper, whereas not many people really expect him to have a great match, but he puts on a great match anyway, and not many people notice that. But it's it's clear to a lot of wrestling fans. And Dustin Raymond is, you know, the, the way he brings his moveset to the ring. He's a powerhouse who can lift you up, take you off your feet, and slam you into the mat as hard as he can. That's the kind of performer that earns some respect from me. That's the kind of performer that is able to dominate in the ring and make sure that he continues on this destructive path that he goes on. Dustin Raymond is one tough motherfucker, and I'm hoping that they can take that Dustin Raymond blade, switchblade, and Dwayne Porter rivalry and just shove it away because he's got a lot more potential than that worthless feud. So, in my eyes, Dustin Raymond can be, again, a blue belt champion. I I could picture him as the world champion. I think I think he's been the world champion. If not, then I think he could be the world champion. Maybe even USW champion, but not right now, or not near now. But I feel like he's got a lot of potential, and if they were to insert him in the world championship picture within a month, then it wouldn't hurt him. Like, I mean, even though with that kind of thing, it would probably hurt many other performers. So, number seven, we go to Capital. Capital, who started at the beginning of the year as just a nobody. And right now, in September, the end of September of 2014, he's gone from being nobody at the beginning of the year to being the current and two-time USW World Heavyweight Champion. He's had great matches with Mojigata. He's had one of the longest reigns as USW World Heavyweight Champion in history. He's dominant, he, he's tough in the ring, he knows exactly how to put on a great performance, and there's nothing you can do to stop Capital from kicking your face in. He's going to find a way at least once in the match, and if he doesn't get you down or keep you down and you end up picking up the victory, you should take that as luck and you shouldn't take it, as, take it for granted, because if he gets another chance at kicking your face and he's going to do it twice as hard and he's going to keep you down lying on the ground and let me tell you I didn't know how USW I don't know how USW did not notice that before his world championship you know attempt or whatever so capital is one of the best things that USW has going for them right now I mean with Chris Ross Alex you know, Dustin Raymond, Dwayne, Cap Dwayne Porter, and Capital, when, with those guys, you can have backups for if Yo-Yo Joe, Weston Light, Majigeta Cannon, and Zach Hardy were to leave. You at least have some backups, which is great. So, you know, just remember that Capital is one of those guys who may not be liked by everyone, but definitely has earned many people's respect, and just because many people don't like him does not mean that he's not a great performer. Because he's a great performer, he's got a lot, of, a lot of potential going into his career. I see him being multiple-time world champion. I think he's going to break Chris Ross's record of four, of four championships, or four championship reigns, or four different championship reigns, if he even loses the championship four times. So, you know, just keep an eye out for Capital and keep an eye out for the powerhouse mentality that he brings to the ring because he is one great performer and USW has something really good going with him, going for them with Capital. And having him as the World Heavyweight Champion, man oh man, it is a great way to make that World Heavyweight Championship meaningful. If you thought Majigeta as the World Heavyweight Champion and Cannon as the World Heavyweight Champion 
if you thought that that brought, you know, if you thought that that was the only thing that you could, that USW could do to make that World Heavyweight Championship worth something, then let me tell you this, you have not seen Capitals Championship reign, or you have not noticed his dominance and his importance to that championship. Number six, Dwayne Porter. Holding the record for the most amount of reigns, separate reigns, as the Blue Belt Champion, Dwayne Porter is a high-flying, gut-check technical wrestler that you cannot be wrong about in saying he's got you know, a great future in the wrestling industry. Dwayne Porter is one of those guys where you would see him in the ring at the beginning of the match, and you would think, that dude looks interesting. I might as well sit in, my, uh, sit in this chair and watch his match to see what he does. And let me tell you, he does not disappoint. Because when that match goes up, and by the end of that match, you are glad that you sat on your chair and watched the entire match. Because he excites you, he makes you interested in the match, and he pretty much brought the importance to the Blue Belt Championship. If he had not been the Blue Belt Champion multiple times, and not have been a dominant Blue Belt Champion, then the Blue Belt Championship would not mean anything to USW. At least it would not mean as much as it does now to USW or to the performers. Dwayne Porter has had a significant importance in USW when it comes to the minor division. When I, and by minor division, I mean people who are not in the World Championship or USW Championship picture. People who are in the picture of the Blue Belt Championship and the Extreme Championship. Derek Carter, I mean, not Derek Carter, I'm sorry, I get, get him mixed up all the time. Dwayne Porter, along with Dustin Raymond, have brought so much importance to that minor role when it comes to having the people in the minor role have a great chance of getting to that major role. So Derek Carter, I mean, darn it, Dwayne Porter, <laughs> not Derek Carter, Dwayne Porter, along with Dustin Raymond, have a great future in USW, and I could see them being the world champion or USW champion, you know, in recent, you know, in recent few, oh, I'm sorry, in recent, you know what, no, I see them becoming the USW champion or the USW world heavyweight champion very soon. I would say more like the the World Championship, not more like not the USW Championship, but more like the World Championship picture. But if they won the USW Championship picture, I'm pretty sure that they could have a great um, feud with Zach Hardy or um, let's say Cannon or Mashigeta, whoever's in the USW Championship picture at that time. Number five, and yes, if you guessed it. The legend, the people in the Legends contract, the top five performers in USW are in the top five. But number five, we kick off with Yo-Yo Joe. The probably most overrated performer in the top five. Yo-Yo Joe, even though very overrated, is someone who deserves to have at least one match on the pay-per-view and every pay-per-view. Um, if USW still had those filler matches, which they have from time to time, Yo-Yo Joe would have to be in one, at least every pay-per-view, if he was not in a feud. Yo-Yo Joe is not the kind of guy where you can do so much with him, because you can't really do too much with him. I'm I'm not really sure that you can really have him as the world champion or the USW champion at this point in time, with how much the world championship and the USW championship have evolved. But I feel like Yo-Yo Joe could be a strong mid-card performer, if not, maybe could be a close World Heavyweight Champion. When you had him back in, I think, May, June, July, when you had him feuding with Zack Hardy for the old USW Championship, when he didn't pull it out those two or three times that he fought Zack Hardy for the championship, when he couldn't pull it out, that kind of made me wonder whether or not he could be a World Champion. But now I think that even though he doesn't really seem like the USW champion, you know, in my mind, I feel like he could be a strong USW World Heavyweight Champion. I mean, of course, he would have to get past the other guys, you know, Capital. Um, maybe Mashageta would be inserted in there at one point. I think Western Light could be a great choice to be in there. But Western Light is a good performer, 
and Yo-Yo Joe and Weston Light could have a great feud, much like they did in February and March of this year. So Yo-Yo Joe and Weston Light, I see them having great, a great star, but a great, a great career that they have left. But even though, we're, I mean, right now we're talking about Yo-Yo Joe, and with Yo-Yo Joe and the, the pretty much every type of wrestling ability packed into his move set. He is one of those performers where you love watching him in the ring, you love watching him kick ass, and he's really an exciting performer. Now, Yo-Yo Joe, he's a high flyer, he's a powerhouse, he's a technical wrestler, he's a submission specialist, he's all that wrapped in one. And that's what saves him the, you know, a higher spot, or that's what saves him a lowest spot on this list. But, you know, Yo-Yo Joe is one of those guys that kind of even though doesn't really have much going for him or much left that he can do for you know i think he's still one of those performers that you know can be a top talent and that is you know deserves a lot of respect that brings us to number 4 western light of course not one of the bigger 3 even though you now know who i'm talking about western light is the kind of guy who i could see one day being the USW champion if Zack Hardy were not to be in that picture or in another picture I see Western Light being a future USW champion, a future USW World Heavyweight champion. He's already been the world champion once. I think him as the USW champion would be pretty cool and pretty interesting. It'd be like a different change of things. You know, Morbid couldn't get the USW championship, so having another guy who's like that dark, gothic kind of, um, not really gothic, but more like that dark kind of gimmick, I think that would be crazy for the USW championship, and it'd be really cool and interesting. But Weston Light, one of the performers that I feel is kind of underrated, just a little underrated. I think people expect a good match from him, but I don't think, I don't think that, you know what, it, I'm going to have to put it into numbers here. I think in a scale of 1 to 100, people expect Weston Light to be an 85, when really he can be, and he probably is, a 90. So, Weston Light is a, is kind of underrated when it comes to the fans and their expectance in Western Light, and also when it comes to him and his and the way he's booked, because he hasn't been booked quite well this year. Besides his rivalry with Yo Yo Joe and with Majigeta, as well as his teaming with Majigeta, but Western Light is one of those performers who I feel is underrated, unlike Yo Yo Joe, who is overrated. Western Light is a great performer. Whatever he has left in the tank, which probably is a lot because he is still, you know, a younger performer. Whatever he's got left, he can run with and he can make the most out of. So, Western Light, future USW champion, future once again, a future world champion in my eyes. And that brings me to number three, Maja Geta. Now you've narrowed it to the final two and you probably know who I'm going to pick for those final two spots. But Maja Geta, former world champion, former USW champion former international champion, he's pretty much already won the Triple Crown. He's won the Triple Crown. He and Cannon are the only ones to have ever won the Triple Crown, which is an amazing achievement, and Western Light... I'm sorry, Moshe Geta. I was looking at Western Light's name on my uh, list. Moshe Geta is the performer that is pretty much... Like, he's the main performer now, but if we were to see a, a change in the roster, let's say Zack Hardy were to not be in the roster anymore, he would leave, and I'm going to bring Zack Hardy up a lot in this video, then I think Majigeta could be the new face of USW. I, I honestly mean that. I see him, since he's been a USW champion, he's been a world champion. I see him once again in you know near future once he gets out of this um once he gets out of this storyline with Weston Light, Fernandez and Gringo, I see him back in the U the the main event picture and becoming the world champion or the USW champion. And I I see that happening very soon. Moshigeta is a performer that no one can really compare um another performer to. Moshigeta Honestly, in my opinion, probably very deserving of being the USW champion. And I don't say this too often, 
but I feel like if Moshigeta were to face Zack Hardy, I feel like Moshigeta would be able to completely overtake Zack Hardy. And if you've seen Zack Hardy wrestle, you know that would be that'd be absolutely insane to see. Zack Hardy's been running running rampant on this roster for the past few months. Actually, he's been running rampant in USW and WOW for the past few years. Um, and Moshigeta could be the, you know, end canon probably, would be the only per performers that could actually hold a candle to him. So, Moshigeta though, he's not overrated and he's not underrated. Moshigeta is one of those performers that USW has done and will do and c I can guarantee you will continue to do something and things great with. Number two, canon. You already now know who number one is. But Cannon, former world champion, former USW champion, and former tag champion. Cannon, the second, obviously Mojigeta being the other, the second uh, triple crown winner in USW. <laughs> Cannon has had great feuds, as well as Mojigeta, but Cannon has got great feuds in the main event picture. He's had feuds with Chris Ross, with Mojigeta, with Zack Hardy, with Mojigeta and Zack Hardy at once. And you know he's had feud he's had a feud with Capital in 2013, but that's before Capital became a big name. Um, he had a feud with Dirt with Wayne Porter, but that lasted about a month. Um, he's had feuds with Western Light with Yo Yo Joe, although those those feuds don't really hold a candle to Marjorie or Zach Hardy. The, um, their feuds with Cannon and Cannon, I feel, is most recognized for his in in WOW for his feuds with Marjorie and Hardy at the same time, and in USW for his um, rivalry with Zack Hardy that lasted about, I'm gonna say, possibly six, seven, or eight months. Um, you, it's pretty much started when, um, Hardy lost the championship, to, or won the championship back from Double XL. When Hardy and Cannon ended up facing off at Capital Carnage, um, 2013, and Hardy ended up having to leave because his shoulder was... I don't know, broken or something like that. He got close to breaking it. And then when he returned, he picked up the feud with Cannon, and the feud ended when Zack Hardy won and retained the USW Championship at Final Chapter and No Remorse 2013. Cannon is one of those performers that will continue, along with Marsh Getter and Zack Hardy, he's one of those performers that will continue to earn achievements and earn accomplishments so many that you can't even keep count or keep track. So, Kenan, obviously, going to be a great performer in the future, and is a great performer, has been a great performer. He is the past, present, and future of this organization. Number one, was there any doubt about it? The number one most important performer in USW, the one who has been revolved around in both WOW and USW, for the past few, few years, what, six years? Over half a decade already. The number one performer on my list, obviously, Zach Hardy slash Enigma, or AKA Enigma. Zach Hardy, I forgot, over 30 championships he's accomplished in his career. He's already won a Hall of Fame um, plaque in WRW. He's the face of USW, he was the face in WRW. He's what this company revolves around. Oh, I'm sorry, not company. I've been talking a little bit about the WWE with my friends for a, a few while. Um, he's for this organization. He has been the main centerpiece and will continue to be the main centerpiece until he leaves USW or he has to retire or he has to leave, period. He will be the one that USW revolves around and that's without a doubt. Um, what has Zach Hardy not done? He's gone, gone, you know, he's gotten noticed from rivalries, winning championships. He's left a legacy, a mark, in both WRW and USW. He... Man, oh man, there are so many things Zach Hardy's done that I can't, I can't even recall because there's so many that I can't even think of. I mean, that, I mean, I'm sorry, not think of. There's so many things that I can't even think of any others because I'm already focusing on the ones that I don't know or that I don't remember. Zach Hardy is the performer that will always be the you know the main focal point of USW, probably even after he retires. And let me tell you, 
let me tell you a little thing. You know how John Cena in the WWE is booed and hated by many pe people, even though he's like the face of the WWE? Zack Hardy's the face of the of USW. The reason why fans don't hate him is because USW does not force the does not force him on the fans. Zack Hardy leaves the talking that he does to his performance. He doesn't talk shit. He talks by performing in the ring. And that's what's gotten a lot of people's respect. And there are way f may, there are way more fewer um Hardy haters than there are Cena haters. And that says something. Zack Hardy is the face of USW, just like John Cena is the face of the WWE. Just like AJ Styles was the face of TNA. Um, and I'm pretty sure he always will be the biggest performer in USW and WOW. No matter whether he's still there, whether he's gone, whether he's retired, whether he dies. <laughs> he's always going to be the one that has left the legacy in, in USW. And that'll be the same no matter if Uf USW goes higher and higher to the point where they get TVs and deals and they're bigger than the WWE or whether they just completely collapse and they just become nothing anymore. No matter what, I think Zach Hardy's always going to be the biggest performer, without a doubt, to have ever stepped foot in a USW ring. And I don't think that's going to be forgotten and I don't think that's going to be argued against. So thank you guys for watching. That was my top 10 list of the top 10 performers in USW right now. Thank you, various viewers, for watching. Remember to like, favorite, and subscribe for more. I'm Chase Clover, signing off.